Hey guys, Sandy here. Nettie challenged me to talk about the French Revolution, so here is my attempt at doing so in under six minutes. Uh, French Revolution started in 1789, but no one can agree on when it ended. Uh, it was either 1795, 1799, 1802, 1804, or 1814. Personally, I think it was 1804, because that's when Napoleon took over, but that's still being argued. Uh, basically started because of a financial crisis, which was partially caused by French participation in the American Revolution. Uh, there was also a famine going on, so the poor were starving, and because it was the time of the Enlightenment, uh, intellectuals were starting to question whether power should be centered by the, with the clergy and the crown, who, by the way, weren't doing anything to make sure that people could actually eat. Uh, in order to solve the crisis, the crown called for a meeting of the Estates General to create new taxes so that France could make money. And the Estates General was made up of three estates, which were the clergy, the nobility, and then the rest of France. Uh, more people show up from the third estate than the other two combined, and they want everybody to come together into a national assembly, but the others won't agree. So the third estate says, okay, don't come. We'll be the national assembly, and we think it's time to make some changes. So the king doesn't like it, and he starts flooding Paris with loyal troops. Uh, which makes the third estate feel threatened, so then they storm the Bastille, which is not only a prison, uh, but is also where a ton of weapons are stored. So they gain access to a ton of weapons and start terrorizing people with them. And then a rumor starts that the royalty is hoarding bread, so a bunch of peasant women with pitchforks and guns decide to put the king and queen under house arrest and make them move from Versailles to Paris which they do because apparently everybody is afraid of pitchforks and guns in the hands of peasant women. Um, and then a, a year later the king and queen decide they don't want to be under house arrest anymore. So they try to escape dressed as servants uh, and they fail miserably. They are caught, brought back to Paris, and then it's suddenly decided by the revolutionaries that because the king was trying to leave France, uh, he was officially abdicating the throne. So France no longer has a king, and it's now a republic. Which makes other countries in, nervous, in Europe nervous. So then the, Aus the Emperor of Austria, who was Marie Antoinette's brother, and the King of Prussia decide to restore the monarchy to France, which makes the revolutionaries mad, and starts a war between France, Austria, and Prussia. And the revolutionaries think this is just going to fix everything, because once they win, they can plunder Prussia and Austria for all of their food and money, which will fix all the problems that started the revolution in the first place. But of course it doesn't. It only makes things worse. Um, in order to ensure that this new republic is going to work and that they can keep their uh, constitution, the revolutionaries decide to kill a bunch of nobles and the king uh, by the guillotine. And this makes the rest of Europe nervous. If they can kill a king, then they can threaten any royalty in Europe. So then France is suddenly at war with Russia, and Austria, and Spain, and Portugal, and the Netherlands, and Great Britain. So it has all these different wars going on, and meanwhile, nobody's doing anything to fix the fact that no one can eat and the country is broke. Um, so by 1794, uh, the Committee of Public Safety is basically in power, and they decide to guillotine over 16,000 people, including Marie Antoinette, a lot of clergy, nobility, and people who weren't revolutionary enough, which I think officially makes them suck at public safety. Uh, and then they operate under this new constitution from 1795 to 1799, which actually makes the economy even worse. But people are actually excited because the military is doing really well, and um, it's pretty much the only institution people have faith in anymore. They did a military draft in 1793, which means they had a whole bunch of more soldiers than anyone else. So then this uh, soldier general by the name of Napoleon comes along uh, and names himself emperor, brings a bunch of the wars across the continent to a close, and um, the France goes from one extreme ruler to another and didn't solve any of the problems that the revolutionaries uh, set out to solve. <laughs> and that's the French Revolution, uh, the short version. <laughs> In other news, I wanted to show you guys my totally awesome new shirt that I'm going to be wearing for the Hunger Games premiere. Uh, Martin got it for me, and it's made me totally excited. Uh, my friend Jason calls me his stylist because I'm the person who got him into Hunger Games, 
and I officially align myself with um, District 11. So this shirt really makes me happy, and I wanted to share that with you guys before the premiere on Thursday. Um, I can't wait to hear more about what you guys are going to do uh, for the premiere. I look forward to reading about that on Facebook and on the forums. And until next time, I'm going to challenge uh, Sparks, and I want you to talk about the unspoken rules of friendship and what you think that they are. Um, obviously, everybody has different ones because they're unspoken, but I'm I'm curious. So uh, that's your challenge for next time, Sparks. And until then, this is Sandy signing out. See you next time.